got love for you, man. Okay. What are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take it serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything that, out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast. Welcome to another podcast. I appreciate you guys listening from coast to coast and from sea to shining sea. I don't know. I don't really know if it's coast to coast is kind of said it all. I should have just stopped at coast to coast. What is what is from the Arctic to the Caribbean Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, unless there's someone from South America listening, which I would appreciate. That'd be cool. Any uh, expats out there in Costa Rica? Costa Rica would be a good New Year's Eve option. Anyway, I'm your host, Cabby Richards, vibrating in your ears to all my American homies. By the time you hear this, you'll be a few pounds deep in Turkey, so enjoy your Thanksgiving. And to the Canadian homies listening, hopefully you've burned off all that turkey by now, because in a month, we will be gouging ourselves again. Christmas time is fast approaching, and you have about a month to get your list sorted and checked off. So, fellas, get your plan together. For Blue Jays fans, I have two gifts for you. And my first one is on the line. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. For the past four plus years, he's been smashing home runs in Toronto, becoming a fan favorite and one of the game's most popular players. In my first interview with him at TSN, he rigged a pitching machine so that when I was, when I was in the batter's box, I took a baseball in the back. It was painful, but probably not as painful as what he experiences when I interview him. Jose Batista of the Toronto Blue, Blue Jays, Welcome to Cabby Presents the Audio Form. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Where Where are you right now? Like physically, where in the world are you? I'm in Tampa, Florida. Uh, still doing my rehab, uh, and right now, as we speak, just walking around, uh, walking around the mall. Actually, uh, trying to do some shopping around with my uh, with my dad and my brother. Hey, have you started Christmas shopping? No, not yet. Uh, that'd be uh, way too early, but. Uh, but I will wrap that up in the month of December. But <laughs> are you one of those, do you plan your Christmas shopping or are you totally like last minute, let me just see what I can find at the mall type of dude? Last minute, but uh, I try not to let it get to the mall stage. I try to do it with a little bit of time in advance. That way I, I, I get some thoughtful gifts for my loved ones. And uh, if I can't, then... Plan B is rushing to the mall. Yeah, like the rest. Whatever you can. Yeah, like the rest of us. We're just looking at, I always look at like the mannequins. I'm like, oh, that looks nice. Or like, I mean, the, the one thing you got to avoid is like shoes. You can't buy shoes for a woman because that's like, it's impossible to, to to figure out what she likes. I mean, unless unless you have like an unbelievable eye. But I'm totally that guy. I just look at what's in the in the storefront. I'm like, that looks good. Let me get one of those. Are you the same? Yeah, uh, it's kind of like that, but I mean, you can't go wrong going to a store with a good return policy. Uh, <laughs> worst case scenario, they can just take it back and get what they, what they, what they like. You also can't go wrong with gift certificates, even though that's kind of like it's sort of a thoughtless gift. In some ways, it's better because then whoever you're buying for, they can go get what they want, and if it's from the store that they really like, then all the all the pressure is off of you for finding that one thing, and they can just go in there and spend however much time they need to find what they actually like. Have you done that, gift certificates? Uh, I haven't done it, but it is thoughtful. I mean, and it, sometimes you're undecided, and a honesty, honesty is the best policy sometimes. You can just say <laughs> straight up, listen, I was undecided. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to get you, but I do know you like a couple of items in this store, and here it is. You can, can you just, actually say that, though? Yourself. Can you actually say that to a girl, I mean, to a woman? Like It sounds... In our minds, I mean, this is like dude logic. 
Like sometimes you know, what we think, it like it all depends. It all depends, I guess, what stage the relationship. Ah, is. of course. Okay. Some, if somebody long term, I guess it'll go down easier. But if it's somebody that you're still trying to courtship and I guess trying to enamor, uh, I think it, it's it's a little bit different. See, I wonder. I wonder if that goes. You can also spin that the other way. Like if you've just been with someone for a few months, you could be like, hey, you know, I'm not, you know, we haven't been together that long, so I'm not exactly sure what you like, and I didn't want to mess it up and have you feel guilty if you don't wear the sweater I bought you or this bracelet or if you're not into this thing. So I wonder if you yeah. can, you could probably flip it the other way as well. Like you, either way, you could probably play it. To your advantage. I would try that. No way. I, I would try. I, I think you can get away with a gift card or a cash gift if you're in a in a long term relationship. I don't. I wouldn't even try it in a in, in a new relationship. Really? See, I, yeah. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure it's 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 been worse. Like some dudes have bought like awful gifts. So either way, as long as uh, I think the women they just want to know that you thought about it a little bit. Like well, they like just, you said, it's the thought that matters and the attempt. So as long as you know you had a good plan behind it. I think sometimes, especially early in their relationships, women would rather you go through the, the hassle and the trouble of trying to do it right instead of just taking the easy way out. Right. Hey, what did you do this weekend? Excuse me? What did you do this past weekend? Like, I, what did you do Friday, Saturday, Sunday? What did you get up to? Um. Well, we've been busy with the move. I just moved to a new house, so that uh, kept me busy. But then other than that, I just watched a lot of football on Sunday couple of movies with my family on um, over the weekend. So i just be at the house, fixing up the new home, and trying to get everything organized and settled. Jose, did you move into a bigger house? You could say that. <laughs> How much bigger is your new house? It's just quite a bit... Uh, bigger than my previous home. <laughs> uh, Listen, I'm not going to ask you how much it costs. I just want to know in terms of how many more square feet are in the the new Casa de Batista. <laughs> Maybe about 6,000 more. Oh, dude, you got a, your house is massive. Dude, a 6,000 well, square... it's different. I mean, in the U.S., houses are, are, are a different style than, than in Canada. So, And it's, it's in an area like what you would consider, you know, not downtown, so it's more spacious because of a variety of reasons, not not necessarily a, what you consider a massive house. I mean, it, it is a big house, but uh, I guess it's uh, not that uncommon for for the states and in the area that I'm in. You know what doesn't change between Canada and the United States? 6,000 square feet. It's the same in both countries, and that's a lot of space, dude. A lot. No, I agree with you, but if, if, I mean, I've been, I've been in Canada and I've been in the States, and I, I guarantee you, if you put this in my house, my new house, uh, somewhere downtown in Toronto, it'll be massive. But if you go out to, let's say, Mississauga or something, it wouldn't be as bad. I mean, it's a big house and it's comfortable to be able to accommodate a lot of family and friends when they come over and entertain and all that. But uh, it's, it's, it doesn't. I, I guess I I can say this: I didn't go over the top. <laughs> Even though it's huge, you still you didn't go over the top. Okay, well then, you got to put some. I know you're active on Twitter. One of these days, you just got to give us one glimpse. Maybe you show us your Christmas tree, or you know your family dinner spread, or something like that. You give us a little glimpse into your uh, into your private life. Yeah, Wait. definitely. It's always uh, something that I always try to do. Just a little peek here and there. Uh, at the same time, you know. You gotta, you always, always gotta be careful with the amount of personal information. You yeah, that's true. Post. But I mean, it's the human side to to everything. So uh, I want to make sure that I connect with uh, with my fans and they get to know the real me. Hey. And I always try to uh, always push that across the board as much as I can. Well, you do. You're you're definitely you definitely engage fans on Twitter and and uh, various social media uh, apps and stuff. So that's cool. Now, with a house the size of your new house. Will you have any roommates? Like, are you going to have cousins or siblings that are like, hey, man, can I just uh, can I just live in the basement or can I just live in the, the West Wing for a little bit? Or, or I do know members for sure. Uh, I don't know about roommates, but uh, I wouldn't <laughs> mind if, if a couple of my, my cousins or, or friends uh, want to come over and uh, spend... Uh, some time with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, talking. I'm, not move in with the, all their all their belongings, but <laughs> and I do have a family, so that's the reason why I moved. And uh, I'm trying to to raise a child. Uh, 
two actually now. Uh, hey, and, congratulations! Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so wait, it's Estella and who? And who's the who's Estella's younger sibling? Eva. Eva. Did I get it right? It is Estella, right? Yes. Okay, you Estella. And, so you have two girls. Two girls. Oh man, I'm proud, proud father of two girls. You were a bad boy back in the day, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna pay all my dues. Oh, are you ever? That's like, it's gonna be funny when like when like 14 year old boys start showing up at your house, and like in it's the. Be funny to, it's gonna be funny to me, but it's not gonna be funny for them. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely when they see your silver baseball bats over the mantel place, like your silver your silver slugger, your home run, you know, awards and stuff, and like, hey, listen, I know how to smash. So if you do That's anything, right. just know that parts of your body will be broken within a few <laughs> seconds. Yeah, I foresee that happening in, uh, <laughs> about 10, in about 13, 14, 15 years. Oh, man. So, one, one, uh, okay, so I, I, I need you to tell me a story. We were talking, I don't know, sometime during the season, you guys are on the West Coast, and you went to a Drake concert in Oakland. I never got the story about the concert. Like, how was that seeing, you know, you play in the only Canadian market in Canada, and you're watching a Canadian in the United States do his thing and rip it up on stage. What was that like? It was unbelievable. It's a great experience and actually a, a huge uh, strike of luck that we were both in the same cities and I had a day off the next day and I was able to go to the concert. So it was awesome. Uh, we reached out to his uh, management and they were uh, kind enough to accommodate us. Uh, got to say hi to him. Uh, and just like you said, seeing somebody from Toronto, the city where I call home in the summer and I, I play in and the team that I play for. It was unbelievable. I mean, his reach and uh, his fan base and uh, how much people love him uh, because of what he does is, is unreal. And watching him, like you said, rip it up on stage with Little Wine and everything was was a great experience. And uh, I have to uh, that I get to enjoy a couple more of those because it was certainly fun. Have you? Um, how do you choose your entrance music? Do you just go with what's hot, or do you just take suggestions from people? I actually have allowed my teammates to pick them for the last two or three years. Oh I, I my think gosh, I might have to really? change that. Maybe I'll create something where my fans get to pick it, something uh, with uh, social media where I get them engaged a little more. Yeah, that, that'd that be cool. So wait, what have your what have your teammates picked for you? Like, did you get like the Call Me Maybe song or like a Bieber song or like a like a Taylor Swift song? What have you had this past season? Well, they, they've actually been nice to me. They, they kind of want to play something that people enjoy and, and get a... Uh, get hyped up to when I come up to hit. So they pick every song that I've had ever since they picked the, the, the o OMG song uh, a couple years ago. So I've had a bunch of Latin music, and uh, the one that people liked the most was uh, the Usher, the OMG song uh, right. a couple years back. So, But um, they haven't done anything to upset me or to like mess with me, and I, I think that's, <laughs> that's pretty good because uh, if, if if I was in the, if it was the other way around and I had to pick for other people, I, I would always be trying to pick something to uh, either make fun of or or just mess around with. Oh, for sure! Like it's, I would they would get some One Direction, they would get some all just straight up boy band stuff, like the twelve year old stuff. I don't know who the next Bieber is, but whoever that kid is, that's that's what I would be giving JP Aaron Sebia or. Uh, some of your new teammates, who which we'll get to in a second. Now, I don't know if you're into UFC. Did you? Um, uh, but uh, George Saint Pierre, who's a dude from Montreal, he just fought um, in UFC 154. It was it was a bloodbath. Did you see this fight against Carlos Condit? Unfortunately, I didn't see the fight, but I knew it was happening. I was busy with the move and stuff, uh, but I did hear about the results, so I know he he won. Uh, they won the the whole. Five rounds, I think, and uh, yeah, won yeah. That by decision. But I heard it was pretty nasty, and they were both uh, pretty banged up and bleeding. So, yeah, it was. Uh, I'm sure it was a great fight to watch, and uh, my hats off to them because what they do is not easy, and they put their life on the line on a daily basis to do what they love and, and provide for the family. So that's um, that's uh, pretty cool. Now, Jose, before the fight, he was talking to reporters, and somebody asked him if he was ever if he's ever been distracted by someone sitting cage side so he told a story about he was fighting uh i can't remember maybe it was matt sarah or something like that but he was he made eye contact with cindy crawford who at a time was one of the hottest women in the world when she's on the cover of sports illustrated late 90s early sorry late 80s early 90s cindy crawford was one of those supermodels like hugely successful 
Do you remember a time, Jose Batista, when you were distracted by an attractive fan in any baseball park in North America? Actually, no, and I can say that proudly because uh, fortunately for us, when well, we're on the field, we're facing the other way than the crowd. So, uh, uh, that's that wait, happened. no, no, no. But wait, uh, when... if I was a if I was a pitcher, maybe it would be different. But by the time I get up to the plate and I actually need to focus, uh, I'm looking at the pitcher. So it's, even if I try to, uh, you know, distract myself, I probably couldn't. I wouldn't be able to. But Jose, okay, you're only talking about half of the game. In fact, you're only talking about four times a game when you take the plate. The other Nine innings, you're in the field. You're in right field. So there are times when, you know, there's a foul ball to left field or whatever. You have time to glance around because baseball is a very long game. So there is. It is. But for, again, it works to my advantage. I'm so far away that I can't make anybody's faces from, from the distance. So that's. Uh, and, and I feel like you're I mean, dodging the question. I feel like you're yeah. dodging. You're doing a pretty good job, but I feel like you're dodging. Well, I'm being honest, but again, <laughs> to help you out a little bit, when you're on deck, sometimes you get a close-up with the, with fans here and there. But uh, to be quite honest with you, I don't think uh, maybe, and I forget her name, the 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 girl from the movies um, American Pie when the first one came out. I guess uh, we were playing the Dodgers one time, and she was near sitting somewhere near by, by the on deck circle, and I remember. Okay, wait. Uh, that was a. A little bit distracting, but wait, wait, uh, Jose, which one though? Was it was it like okay? Because from the first from the first American Pie movie, but there were like four girls in there. The the blonde girl, not not the Nadia, whatever the other one. No, see, see, Nadia, Nadia was she was legit. Okay, the blonde one. So that's Tara Reid. Tara Reid or Mina Suvari. Tara Reid. Okay, she was she was hot back in the day. After that, around that time, that first uh, American Pie, she was hot. Yeah, uh, I was somewhere, and I can't remember exactly where I was. Probably on the West Coast somewhere, and I, I remember he was sitting uh, uh, close to uh, one of our uh, games by the on deck circle. So that's probably the only time I remember seeing, you know, one of those celebrities that you think is attractive uh, nearby where, where I was playing. Jose, does this ever happen to you? Okay, I know you're in a mall. You're in a mall in Tampa. And, like, when you're – okay, so that, like, for regular dudes, you know, when you see – okay, when you're walking in the mall and you see a cute girl approaching – do you, okay, there are like various ways to handle the situation because she's cute and like, you know, he's like, wow, she's a cute girl. So do you, are, do you do like the thing where you, you don't like, you don't act like you see her or do you slow down and then like, and then, you know, and then just as, as you're walking past her, you kind of have your stroll on or do you like continue walking and then at the last moment you kind of glance over to her to see if she's looking at you? Do you, do you do any of those three things? Well, you know. It's been such a long time. You're only a man, <laughs> Jose, but you're only a man, okay? That I, that, that I can't even remember what I used to do in those uh, situations. No, I mean, it's, um, you know, sometimes you're walking around, whatever, and as long as you, you're respectful and res- uh, to, to your partner, uh, it's, always, it's always allowed, I guess, to look around. Yeah, you're just looking. You, know, it's you just can looking. look but not touch, I guess, of course. that kind of thing, but... Uh, I'm thinking anybody would be lying if they said they never take a peek or they never are uh, curious if other people are <laughs> kind of glancing at them. So yeah. I think everybody's guilty of that to a certain degree. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure women are as well. Me, I just look the whole time, Jose. I am shameless. Like, if she's good looking, I'll just stare her right in the eyes and make her feel uncomfortable. Like, yes, I'm giving, I'm looking right in the eyes. And if you don't look back, that's fine. I'm still just going to stare at you and laser beam you and stuff. Like that. I'm a creepy, I'm creepy. If I'm in a nice store where I'm trying to buy something and I want to work my way into a nice discount, I might, I might be guilty of, <laughs> of maybe uh, putting somebody in an uncomfortable position from time to time, but that's about it. You flash that smile. Maybe you're wearing a tight T-shirt. You know, you get the gun showing a little bit, and you know, yes. I wish I had. Yeah, I wish I had your your looks and your talent, Jose. So uh, speaking of style, I don't know if you caught any of the. You probably you probably didn't because you were moving, but. Uh, the American Music Awards were on, and um, okay, so like the arguably the biggest star in the world is Justin Bieber, and yesterday he's okay. He's got these shoes. He wears these like this brand called Supra, um, and he wears these like studded Supra. So so yesterday he's wearing like these slippers. Okay, so picture like slippers with like black studs on them. So that's like that's like one of the things he's wearing, and um, 
And so, so my question to you, I don't know how much these are, but regular studded supers are like 180 bucks. What's the most that you've ever spent on a pair of shoes? Um, the most I've ever spent on a pair of shoes have been dress shoes, probably, you know, around 800, 900 bucks. Damn, dude. Are you serious? They don't got all the where you live? Sometimes, you know, you dress up nicely. You're wearing a nice custom-made expensive suit. You can't be wearing all those with us. So wow. You got to... You got to mix and match your, your outfit. How so, many uh, how many pairs of shoes do you own? Total? Yeah. I haven't counted them, but uh, on the upwards of 40 pairs. Probably. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, are, do you have a, okay, in your master bedroom, in the master suite, is there, do you have a closet where you have like a wall where you, where you, you stack your shoes, like you organize your shoes? Is it like that? Yeah, in the new house. Yeah, I do. Oh my gosh, dude! So is it just for your dress shoes, in the or do you? Put... House, I just threw them in the closet on the floor. But... <laughs> in the new house, there is they. There's like, okay, no, you guys, there, you, you pay some respect to your shoes, to your nine hundred dollars shoes. Like, okay, you get your space. These guys get their space. Do you, are you mixing the shoes and the sneakers, or just the dress shoes? Was well, the total amount of pairs? Uh, no, everything. Not, not just. Dress no, but but what what what's gonna go in the closet in the organized uh, area of the closet? I'm gonna try to put them all up there just to have some sort of organization. And uh, but if I can't fit them, then I'll just have to throw uh, the rest on, on a different spot, maybe on the on the floor. So Jose, if you have 40 pairs, how many does Wifey have? 400 pairs? How many does who have? Wifey. Oh, plenty. <laughs> Too many for me to count. Uh, that, dude. That's actually one of the things that I'm go I'm going through right now is. Finding a spot for my shoes and trying to see if I can adjust the closet somehow to find space for mine. Dude, your your shoes mostly taken up. Your shoes are going to end up in the garage. Maybe, probably. Now, uh, I was reading uh, before we started talking. Uh, Andre three thousand, who is a, a a rap artist from the group Outkast, he was talking about style. And he's a very stylish dude. He's uh, been featured in GQ a bunch of times, and. Um, he says this about style. He says, style is a conversation. Um, it's all about how you feel and you speak with your clothes. Now, as baseball fans, we don't get to see you guys off the field that often. Like in, in basketball, excuse me, in basketball and in hockey on the broadcast, you know, we see the players in their suits when they come off the bus or their outfits and they're walking in the arena. They, they do that a little bit in football, but they don't do it in baseball. So for to how would you describe your style, Jose Batista, off the field? Um, I guess I, I'm not too flashy, but I do like, you know, certain things. Uh, personal, you know, likes is, is a big plus for me. I don't necessarily dress just like the average Joe just to blend in. But uh, at the same time, I try to keep it classy enough and not too flashy that I'm just drawing attention to myself. So, uh, yes, that's one way to look at it. Uh, other than uh, my watch, I don't really uh, pay that much uh, attention to, to any particular item in, in, in my uh, outfit. And uh, I can just put something together quickly that I think looks sharp and uh, that represents me well, and then that's pretty much it. So the watch, they, like for, for most men... It's the shoes and the watch. The watch is the man's jewelry, and the shoes are a way to express themselves. So how many watches do you have? 40 pairs of shoes. How many watches do you own? I don't have that many watches. I got nine watches. But, uh, nine watches. That, that, is, that is something that I really like. It's maybe my hobby or collector's uh, dream. Uh, so I hope to grow my collection with time. And that is something that I am going to really... Be careful with. I just don't slap anything on my wrist. Uh, anything right. that I'd like to wear, it's got to represent something or, <laughs> or, uh, or myself in some way. So uh, I guess Android 3000 uses clothes to express what I use a watch to express. Right. Okay. So nine watches. You'll be adding to watches. That's like a legit asset. Like if you have a watch collection, like that has that has value, not just in an expression. So. I mean, I, I think I only have my friend Justin has like forty watches. I have about I think I have four. And I definitely want to, to to up my watch game. So if there's a watch that you take out of your rotation for a few years, you know, you could you could as early Christmas gift, if you don't mind, you know, your boy Cab could use a new timepiece in his collection. <laughs> All right, see what I can work up. Uh, maybe uh, 
get some sort of limited edition uh, uh, with the proceeds going to some foundations in the future. <laughs> and maybe uh, I can hook you up with one of the Oh, that'd be dope. That would be dope. Okay, so, all right, so the big thing, the big, big, big thing. On November 13th, you tweeted the following. It's a good day to be a Blue Jay. It immediately got 6,000 retweets. Why did you tweet that? Well, just like everybody else, I was looking at uh, the rumor mill and Twitter itself. You know, everybody was going insane about this proposed trade. And once I saw the, the players involved, you know, and I saw how much attention it was getting, I figured it, you know, it's got to be a pretty legit uh, rumor. I saw some of the, the biggest uh, guys in, in the baseball industry when it comes to controlling the news and the rumors, and they had been talking about it. So I, I figured it was pretty legit, uh, even though it needed probably uh, – to be official and going through the the players um, to the MLB, uh, but uh, I knew it had a pretty good chance of getting done, and uh, that's just how I feel at the moment. That's how I feel right now. You know, our team that got that much better, uh, so as a Blue Jays uh, player and for fans and people around the city, uh, in Toronto and in, in the whole country in Canada, I mean, people should be really proud and excited about the upcoming season. Uh, we're, we should be contenders. Uh, for the next four or five years consistently. Uh, there's no excuses. There's no thing to really point at in the sense that, uh, you know, ownership or management hadn't done enough. They did what they did. Now it's up to us, the players, to go out there and perform. And uh, those are the moments you thrive for in your professional career, especially when you love what you do, somebody to provide you and the right opportunity uh, in order to succeed. And that's what our, our organization has provided all of us with. And, and now it's time to... To, uh, to grind it out and, and go out there and, and, and play as good as we can play and bring that championship back to Toronto. How did you hear about it? Was it Twitter like the rest of us, or were you privy to some other channel where, like, hey, this is coming down the pipeline, just just, an, just a heads up? No, I found out on Twitter just like anybody else, and then I got a couple of emails from some of the reporters uh, for the sports sections in Toronto, and, you know, once they get a hold of it and it's that big, you know, uh, unfortunately, we can't comment until it's official. But uh, at that it's time, now official. I, I, it's I now official. I know it was going to be a pretty good. It's official now. Chance of getting done. It's official now. But, yeah. Uh, back then, like, oh, last right, week, right. Uh, it wasn't. So when you okay, so when I got those in, interview requests, I unfortunately had to to uh, say that I couldn't talk about that particular subject. So for the people that are unaware, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays and the Miami Marlins made a huge twelve-player deal that just like shook the baseball world coming to Toronto uh, uh, headlined by Jose Reyes and Josh Johnson, Mark Burley, Emilio Benefacio and John Buck. And the Blue Jays are sending to Miami, you know, Escobar, Henderson Alvarez, uh, Justin Nicolino, Anthony Descalfini. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. Adani Echeverria, Jeff Mathis and Jake Marishnik. Um So, when you went to those all okay, you've been to what three All Star games or four All Star games? Three, three All Star games. The last one being in Kansas City. Now, when you're there, how much, how much interacting do you do with the guys in the National League? Because, because uh, I'm curious as to like what kind of a relationship you have with Jose Reyes. Well, we do plenty, and uh, not because of the All Star game, but uh, you know, just playing baseball and back in the day, Winter League, and both being from the Dominican. I've gotten to know him a little bit on the personal side. So he's a great guy. Uh, he's a hard worker. He's a model citizen. And more importantly, he's one of the best players in MLB. He's going to bring in another ingredient and uh, another element to our team that we, we couldn't say we had before. We have a true, legitimate leadoff hitter that can steal bases and get on base. So uh, that's something exciting to have, especially like me. I'm in the middle of the lineup. I, I, I love hitting with people on base so I could uh, makes my job easier. So, um, so I'm going to enjoy playing with him, and the whole city of Toronto is going to be excited when, when they keep watching this guy play on a day-to-day basis. So, I mean, because you're a position player, I'm, I'm mainly asking about Jose Reyes. I mean, you probably don't have that much interaction with the pitchers uh, because you guys, are, you guys work out differently, you have different schedules, blah, 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 pitchers have different routines, all that kind of thing. So with, with Jose Reyes, um, he's, he's a big name. You're, it's obviously your team here in Toronto. Um, how do you, being like, I don't know who the leader is in the clubhouse. I'm assuming you're one of the leaders, if not the leader, because you 
you produce the way that you have, like you smash home runs, Jose. So when when there's another Jose, wait, so wait, are you guys going to be like, one guy's going to be Jose, the other guy's going to be the deuce? How are you guys going to work out your first names? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to have to go through that. Uh, but I know uh, he likes when people call him by his nickname. And most people, you know, have been calling me Joey Bats or Joey or whatever or my last name. Very rarely people call me by my first name uh, within the clubhouse, surprisingly. But uh, he has a nickname. Like people call him Melassa. It's kind of like molasses, but it's uh, kind of funny and, and sarcastic at the same time because he's he's, he's quite super fast, fast so, right? But then he claims he's sweet like like sugar. So, <laughs> so that's kind of where that's coming from. Molassa, uh, okay, that's his nickname, Molassa. Okay, cool. So there won't be any confusion. They're like, no no one, like, not even the manager will be like, Jose, like, he'll probably call you Batista or Joey Bats, and then whoever your manager will be will refer to Reyes as Malasa. I hope so, and uh, that way we, we won't cause any confusion. Hey, so as one, of the, as one of the leaders of the team, like, when new guys come in, like, how do you... I guess how how do you lead when you're in the clubhouse? I mean, we never get to see it as fans. We only get to see what you do on the field and when you smash home runs and you and uh, Edwin have that cool like you guys you flex your arms at home plate, which is awesome, which is a amazing way to celebrate home runs. How do you like? How does it work in the clubhouse? Like, there's like they're like the jokesters and there's like the guys who just like to chill. They're the guys who play games. I mean, I've seen a, a few uh, clubhouses. But, like, is there a dude that, like, is the guy that checks in with all the players and, you know, the dude that tells stories or the guy that, you know, makes sure everybody's doing okay? Like, are there those types of dudes in that clubhouse? Yeah, there's usually your one or two jokesters. There's the high-energy guys that are just all over the place and kind of acting all crazy. And that, that'd be, uh, uh, you know, Brett Laurie, for instance, and <laughs> JP, JP, JP is the guy that we all make fun of because he's always loving the attention and loving to have the camera in front of him <laughs> and all that. Uh, then you have your quiet guys that are always, you know, chilling. Usually, uh, you know, the more veteran pitchers are like that. We had Jason Frazier. And, you know, guys that, that like to have their space a little bit respected and they're just really focused and uh, they concentrate in a different way, I guess we could we could say it that way. Um, but it's a good mix, you know, everybody's kind of have their own thing going, but at the same time, we all get along pretty well. So I think that's vital, you know, you can't have everybody be the same style of person or, or, or player in one team and works to our advantage. And because everybody's so different, we all mingle so well because we feed off of each other and we enjoy each other's company. So, uh, that's something that's uh, very important as well, uh, because it's a long season, man. And we see each other nine, 10 hours a day, every single day for, for eight months. So. If uh, you have uh, a bunch of uh, people that are not nice, just to to put it that way, or people that uh, w- would be troublemakers, it'd be tough to deal with for so long. Hey, what do you? What's the what's the percentage of English versus Spanish that you speak in the clubhouse? Well, before I'd, I'd say it was you know fifty fifty, but now that our, our team is, um, you know, eighty percent. Uh, I guess on the field, eighty percent, seventy percent Hispanic. I foresee that changing. So I see myself speaking a lot more Spanish in the clubhouse because, like you said, you know most position players hang out with each other and pitchers are on their own schedule and, and time and, and program. So uh, you know if you really look at it, Edwin, myself, uh, Jose Reyes, uh, Melky, if he's his trade, uh, I mean his signing becomes official. Uh, Bonifacio, I mean. Most of us are, are Hispanic, so there's going to be a lot of Spanish being talked in the clubhouse. Can and, you... uh, the, the, the one thing I'm really uh, concerned about is the control of the radio now. Uh, <laughs> you know, like who's going to run the iPod? Of Latin music, a lot of Latin music being played in our clubhouse, so hopefully <laughs> the rest of the guys can deal with it. Hopefully Lori and uh, Adam Lind and uh, <laughs> J- well, JP, JP's Cuban, right? He can speak Spanish, can he? He's Cuban, but... He's a watered down Cuban. He's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but he, he's he's great. He enjoys all types of music and stuff. So that that's not the he guy likes that country. His thing is country music because he's dating uh, what's her name, uh, Kelly Perry or something like that. You know his girlfriend? Yeah, he is. So uh, he is a little bit of a Cuban American country boy. Uh, I guess 
it rubbed up on him when he went to school up in Tennessee, and uh, uh, he loves that, you know, the country music uh, genre. So uh, it's uh, going to have to be uh, worked out, you know, the mix of music that we play in the clubhouse, but uh, everything's up for negotiation right now, I guess. Hey, Jose, can you, can you swear more colorfully in English or Spanish? Um, you know, uh, in the Spanish, it comes more of a natural, I guess. <laughs> and most it rolls of the off the tongue easier. Most of the time when we do it, we're joking around. I'm saying, you know, <laughs> when it's your second language and you're cursing, it usually is, is not just playing around and, and making fun. It's usually because you're upset or something. So I'd say in, in Spanish, is much easier. And, and also in, in way more relaxed uh, situation. Right. You know one thing you ne like it's rare like we never see you react like if there's a pop up or if there's a strikeout like you're one of those dudes that like you hold it in like we never you know some guys are very emotional and you know they'll you know they'll they'll curse on the way back probably cursing to themselves in their in their in their minds but they you sometimes you can see their their mouths moving moving and you can you know you can read their lips but you don't do that how why, why don't you do that yeah, I don't know. I mean, have you been watching me play the last couple of years? Because I feel like I do that all the time. I don't know, man. I don't think so. I, I get I fired up, and I get upset when I don't do what I think I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, I don't take it lightly either. But uh, that's oh, of only, course not. No, no, no. Oddly yeah. enough, oddly enough, it only happens uh, for me with baseball. You know, it's the only thing that really makes me upset. Uh, kind of not performing up to my capabilities, but I do it plenty. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I, I play with a lot of emotion and with I, I live it out all, all out on the field. So, you know, when I a lot of times I have some reactions to even calls from the umpires or or stuff like that 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 I know I got to keep working on and get better at. Uh, never meaning any disrespect, but you know, sometimes when you react a certain way, people can take it the wrong way. So, uh, I'm certainly working on that and improving on that. But I do get fired up and I, I do react. Uh, I don't, I don't just, see it that maybe, often. Maybe it doesn't show on TV. Right. Well, maybe like they they might cut away or we, to. The... Or we got to get your closer seats. Maybe next time oh. you give me a call instead of sitting up in the fourth deck. <laughs> you know, I'll hook you up with some better seats. Dude, I I yeah, I spend most of my time just trying to find better seats. So when I'm watching the game, I'm just like, oh man, just like I wish I was over there in the 108s, and I'm up there, I'm <laughs> up there in the 512s at the at the dome. Okay, last last conversation piece, and I'll get you back to uh, the rest of your day. Um, so. Every, I think it's around Oscar season, uh, Barbara Walters has a special, and it's called like the 10 most fascinating people of whatever the year is. So just today, um, part of that list came out, and I'll tell you who will be on this special. Are you familiar with the special? No, I have never seen it. So, so I mean, it's, I know Barbara Walters' show, but I've never seen this special. So, so it's like, it's usually about an hour, or maybe it's two hours. I, I'm pretty sure it's right before the Oscars. So it'll be like whoever like the 10 big newsmakers are for the year. So for this, for instance, for 2012, uh, Ben Affleck is on there, the pop group One Direction, the author of the book Fifty Shades of Grey, E.L. James, Seth MacFarlane, who's the guy that created Family Guy, Hillary Clinton, who, who we know is the Secretary of Defense in the United States, um, the Olympic, Olympic gold medalist Gabby Douglas, the 16-year-old girl who won the... Uh, Overall, uh, I think she won the gold for overall routine, and uh, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. So the number one person on the list is always revealed during the show. But according to Jose Batista, in your mind, in 2012, who was the most fascinating or interesting person of this year? Not from that list. Just anybody? Yeah, it could be anybody. Like anybody. Yeah. Oh, man, you're putting me on the spot. This is a deep question. It is a deep I question. Don't you, I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Well, just uh, – it just – it's know. basically who would you want – I don't know. It's, do you, I have I have three – I came up with three names. Of course, I've had more time to think about it than you have. I'm kind of just putting you – I'm totally putting you on the How spot. How about you make it easier on me and you allow me to pick one of your three? Okay. <laughs> sure thing. Okay. But my, my choices might be kind of weird. So my first choice – is a director named Christopher Nolan. He's the guy that directed the latest Batman movie. I think he is so intelligent and he's such an amazing filmmaker that I would just like to know more about that dude, like how he came up with the movie Inception, because Inception is a giant mind F. Okay, so that's one. Number two would be Kanye West. And I would just want to know what his life is like with 
Kim Kardashian and how he fell in love with Kim Kardashian after his girl was in a movie, just, you know, in a movie where the whole world got to see and how you, I don't know. So my, we, I'd be curious as to hear what Kanye would say about that. And the third one is this guy named Felix Baumgartner, the dude that went 128,000 feet in the air and he jumped out of a capsule and he was free falling all the way down into earth. Those are my three guys. Christopher so Nolan. The category is who do you think is more interesting? Right. The 10 most fascinating people of 2012. All right, from your list, I'd pick the, the guy that jumped, uh, whatever, uh, sky dove from whatever, seven miles up. I, I remember watching that, and I thought it was pretty crazy, so I'd like to, to find out also what's going through that guy's head. When it comes to uh, to Kanye, uh, he's pretty vocal, so I'll just keep following him and read up about him. And when it comes to the other gentleman with the movie, you know, maybe he's not that smart after all. Maybe he's just confusing all of us. And, <laughs> no, and no, but making you... him seem like he's so smart. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I guess I'd, I'd like to know what the the guy that, that jumped out of the the spaceship or whatever it was. It was I'd a... like to see what he's thinking because I mean to put your life in jeopardy like that. Oh man! Yeah, uh, and just to write your name uh, on the record books, there has to be another reason, and there has to be, uh, you know, you got to push the limit every now and then and stuff, but. You know, when you do that for a living, and it's pretty crazy. So oh, like is it ever? Guys think. His name is Felix Baumgartner, and he's uh, I don't even know what his title would be. Like, uh, I guess he's a, I guess he's a skydiver. Daredevil. Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, he's an Austrian dude, and it was, it was unbelievable. I know that you guys in your, in your contract, there are a list of things, activities like that that you can't do. So once you retire from baseball, what's the first? What's the first sort of daredevilish or, um, I guess, dangerous activity that you would like to try? You know, uh, that might not be so dangerous to 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 people without the contract, but you know, I don't think uh, I would ever want to buy a Ducati. But you know, owning some sort of motorcycle would would be fun. Yeah, uh, maybe going uh, uh, snowboarding or or skiing. You know, some of those things that I don't get to enjoy. I would never do something like bungee jump or jump out of a plane anyways. Really? Just for the sake of it, no. Maybe if there was another incentive to do so, maybe. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not that big into, you know, adrenaline rushes and all that. But uh, at least not from when it comes to doing extreme stuff. Uh, I wouldn't mind, though, uh, owning a Harley or, or some sort of motorcycle or, or like, like I said, going on, you know, New Year's or Christmas vacation uh, somewhere where it's snowing and, and I can snowboard or ski. You know, I'm from the Dominican. I haven't gotten to enjoy those type of things a lot in the past. So uh, something that I want to experience uh, at some point after, you know, I'm not bound to a contract. Well, that, that doesn't allow me to do it. That's uh, that's pretty cool. And with your beard, you on a motorcycle, totally badass. That would totally fit the the persona with some aviators, your beard, black on black. Get yourself that right. like a black and red Ducati. Mm, that, that'd be I wish I was a millionaire, but I'm not you. <laughs> I don't have your talent or your skill or your or your work ethic. So Another thing I'm trying to avoid is, you know, getting a bunch of speed tickets. Because right. when you have that, then you can't even help it. I mean, you got to use it, though. So. That's true. Uh, maybe maybe with you know, the Dominican where it's not in force. <laughs> <laughs> where everything's a little more lenient, yes. Yes. Right. So, uh, yeah, well, then maybe we'll, we'll revisit this topic uh, when you're like 45 and you're just – maybe you're like a mid – midlife crisis and you have like just a just a rack of motorcycles and you're just you're just living out your dreams from when you're a 20 year old man so maybe we'll revisit you at that point all right we can do that well listen jose thank you so much for for coming on man it was awesome uh to hear from you um the whole country is excited and you guys uh will definitely own the summer you know and if things go according to plan it's going to be super super exciting come august september and hopefully after that. So thank you very much, man. And uh, on Twitter, you got to follow him, Joey Bats 19 He's a great follow on Twitter. I'm going to get my hands on one of those baseball cards just to say I got one. And, uh, Jose, if you are feeling charitable, um, that one watch that doesn't make the rotation in 2013, you know whose wrist would love to rock it. All right, I'll make a note. And thanks for having me. It's always a treat talking to you, and uh, thanks for keeping up. And I'll talk to you soon. The Blue Jays have certainly piqued the interest of the baseball world with that 12-player trade 
and the acquisition of Melky Cabrera. And in Canada, sparked the curiosity of the casual sports fan. We're going to continue our uh, baseball conversation with the ace of the staff who's chilling on the West Coast, soaking up Lakers and Niners games. He joins me on the phone right now. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. And on the line is a Southpaw from L.A. County with a talent for throwing strikes and picking up wins. And by wins, I mean models. If you follow him, <laughs> if you follow him on Twitter, you know he's an avid dog lover and a huge fan. Number 24 in the program, number one in your heart. From the Toronto Blue Jays. Ricky Romero. What's up, dude? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm wonderful, man. I'm wonderful. So so where exactly are you right now? Where exactly am I? I'm in my backyard. It is nice and sunny here in Cali, Southern Cali. Um, the pool looks really good right now. So just just living the dream, man. So you're just <laughs> so you just want everybody here in Canada to hate you because you have this uh gorgeous <laughs> You're in this gorgeous setting, and we're dealing with uh, uh, the beginning of a bitter winter. Yeah, I mean, whew, feel bad for you guys. Hey, did you just didn't you just tweet a picture of the of the hot tub the other day? Was that you? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's my that's the backyard right there, man. Who was in it? Just me by I, myself, actually. So I was riding solo, man. Just a so yeah, that's that's not often. That's like a you must have just been taking a break just to just <laughs> <laughs> give the give the joints in the back some rest. Got to man, you have to every there, once in a while get, get 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 relax the body. Of course, man, it's all about you got to re rehabilitate after those hard workouts, Ricky. Without a doubt. Yes. So um, okay, so your uh, your dog Ace, do you? Okay, so so I mean Christmas is coming up, right? And uh, I don't know how big Christmas is in your family, but do you? Are you one of those dudes that you buy gifts for the dog at Christmas? Nah, man. I, I you know. Maybe my sister or my mom will. They'll probably buy him a gift, but, um, you know, I've only had him for, for a little over a year, and I don't think we got him a Christmas gift last year. Okay. You know, he, 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 I'm sure my mom and our sister will do for sure, though. Okay, so you're not one of those. Like, I have friends who are like, well, most I think mostly maybe girls do that. They just, like, get go a little, go a little overboard with buying their dog stuff. I mean, the do it's a dog. It's not going to – the dog just wants food and to go outside, handle his business, and occasionally run around and, like, grab a, a, a tennis ball or sniff another dog's butt. Like, that, dogs are so simple, and they're loyal, but they don't need to be dressed up. Have you ever dressed your – oh, actually, no, you tweeted out a picture at Halloween, right? What was he dressed – he was dressed up at Halloween, right, or no? No, no, he uh, we, we, he's got a little Jays jersey, so we do dress him up in that. Um, so I think I think that, I think that goes. For, that's an exception right there, you know. Yeah, no, that uh, that's appropriate. That's appropriate. <laughs> so he he puts on his little jersey. We put it on every once in a while. But where did you get there. a Jays jersey for the dog? There was Jays Jays shop, man. They had some for big dogs, and and uh, I found it and um and. And bought it for him, and he wears like I said, he wears it every once in a while. I don't think he likes wearing stuff very much, so I think it bothers him. He kind of gets in that little sad mood. He looks at you like, dude, don't don't put this on me, please. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he knows he's being humiliated. Yeah, well, not by the jersey, but by anything you try and put on him. You know, he should be proud of wearing that jersey, though. Right, Lap right. Mouth or something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a a, a lab, correct? Yes, a lab. lab, and my my mom has two little min pins. What's a what are min pins? They're like are those those like dogs you can fit in a purse? <laughs> I mean, pretty much. I guess if you want really wanted to, you know, they're my mom's like she loves them to death, you know. And uh, uh, are they know, like um um? Oh, a friend of mine has two. Uh, I'm thinking pomegranates, but that's not the right word. Po Pomeranians. No. Are they like Pomeranians? No, no. no they, they, these don't have a lot of hair, so it's pretty much. Have you ever seen like a like a Doberman? Yeah, Doberman. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much like a miniature of that. It seems it looks like kind oh, of. Oh, okay, okay. So oh, yeah. okay. So all right, all right. So min pins is what they're called. Min pins, they call them. I don't know. <laughs> Ricky, what what are their what are their names? All right, we got Tootsie, we got Bella, <laughs> and, we, and obviously we got Ace. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every girl has a dog named Bella. Or like one out of every like four girls has a dog named Bella. 
I think I think that's the most popular name for 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 a female dog. I Bella. think I think so. It's like it's uh it's typical. It's cute. Girls like do does your mom dress up those dogs? No, not really. They oh, okay. she she just she just kind of cuddles with them and that's pretty much it. <laughs> does Ace sleep in your bed? Hell no, man. Okay. Like a lot of hair. He sheds too much hair. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, okay, but some people even big dogs like I have some friends of some big and they sleep in the bed and like I'm like, "Dude, are you just you're just going to let the dude just like the, that dog's been smelling like like little mounds of turds all day in the park, and you're gonna let them climb in your bed, man. Like some people, they just they just go too far. In my estimate, I'm not a dog guy, so I I, I may not be the right uh, one know, talking on this. I'm a huge dog guy. I love that guy. You know, he he kind of he, he's that kind of dog. All he wants to do is play fetch, man. You you get a ball, and he'll be best friends with you. It doesn't matter if he's known you for a minute. You know, you get a ball, and you throw it at him. He'll be your best friend for the rest of the day. You know, he's just. He's really loyal, and, you know, it's, he's definitely a cool dog to have around. You know, he just kind of chills, and, you know, like I said, all he wants to do is play fetch. Ricky, do you speak Spanish to your dog? Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. No, not really. I really don't. And if I did, he'd probably look at me like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? So, you're, so your mom or your sister also speak English to the dog? Yeah, yeah, if anything, you know, they just, yeah, yeah, they do. They do. They, he, I mean, you don't really say it. I mean, he knows a few tricks. He knows how to sit. You know, uh, he knows how to shake. He knows how to, he knows how to high five you. He knows how to speak. <laughs> and by, by speak, I mean he knows. You tell him, to, you sit him down. Obviously, you gotta have a treat. You sit him down. You, you kind of, hey, hey, speak, and he'll start barking until you tell him to stop. And <clears throat> he knows how to. When you shoot him in the head, you go bang. He acts like he dies. So oh really? Oh, that's a great trick. That's a great <laughs> trick. So he's a pretty he's a pretty smart dog. <laughs> when you, I, can, I think I can hear the dogs in the background. So I want to get your 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 thoughts on the on the biggest news on planet Earth, like of the last I don't know four or five days. Um, that is, of course, that the Twinkie may no longer be made. Hostess is going out of business and they're liquidating their assets. So the Twinkie is 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 possibly becoming extinct how, how many twinkies that, huh? how many twinkies do you think you can eat in one sitting if you just wanted to be a fat pig oh man twinkies i'd probably be able to handle i don't know about six or seven maybe six or seven. i was i was thinking you're gonna say about a dozen <laughs> they're not that big it's like the size of your <laughs> pinky finger you know what, man? That was more into the cupcakes, the Hostess cupcakes. Oh, those were up. legit. Yeah, those. I mean, how, how can you, especially the orange ones. How do how you top those? You know, the the ones with cream, uh, orange, and then like vanilla cream filling. Like, oh, those those are those were my favorite. I don't think we had those in Canada. We had the regular cupcake, which is like the chocolate cake, and then the vanilla filling, and then the like the little vanilla swirl on the top. But I don't think we had orange ones. I'm not sure. But I, yeah, I don't remember we, seeing those. I've had the orange ones, and obviously, how can you, how can you possibly forget the powdered donuts? You know, those are the best ones. <laughs> those little <laughs> ones, like the, the the size of like a a big coin. Yeah. Those, now, and they come in like be, packs of like six or something or eight. Yeah, yeah. Now give me like ten packs of those, and I'll probably eat them all if I really wanted to. <laughs> if you when you were okay, so uh, what was your what was your uh, go to junk food from like the ages of like six to twelve? Ooh, good, good question. Um, uh, I mean, it's just a variety of candy, man. I, I'm a big sweets guy. I've always been, you know. I, I love dessert. I love it. Like that's my that's my weakness, you know. So if a girl wants to like capture my heart, you know, she better know how to make some good dessert, you know. <laughs> 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 but I I have to say, you know, things like that, like those cupcakes, um, those powdered donuts. Obviously, those those were always good when you're a little kid. I think I was, um, I don't know if you guys had these, but we had uh, something called like a half moon or a Joe Louis, which is just basically like a circular cake and then just like vanilla fill. It's kind of like the cupcake, but not quite, it's not quite as thick. It was more of like, they look like, almost like pancakes, not quite as big, and they just smushed them together with a vanilla filling. That was like a Joe oh, Louis. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, I know which ones you're talking about. I know exactly which ones you're talking about. Well, like, go to. But my, my parents, like, we never, my parents never bought us, like, that sort of thing. We had to, like, either w with allowance or when I was 10, I had a paper route. I used to deliver the Toronto Sun uh, for, like, I think I did it for about eight months. Every Sunday, I'd wake up at, like, 5.30 in the morning and deliver about 100 papers around my neighborhood. And so the money from my paper route I would just murder Joe Louis, dude. That was that was Joe Louis and um you guys didn't have this, I don't think, but these chocolate bars called score score bars. I don't think uh -huh. you guys had those. They're, they kinda taste a little like butterfingers, a little bit. But not okay. so much peanut butter, but that was those are mine. So yours were uh you said it was, you didn't have one particular go to junk food snack, did you? Uh, I'm trying to think. Um Yeah, I I mean you put any kind of candy in front of me, man. I'm probably eating it. I'm I'm a huge Mike and Ike's guy. Huge. Those are. Huge. I don't really think those are the, that dope, Mike and Ike's. Really? What? Unreal, man. I, I love Mike and Ike's. Love them. Oh, love them. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I never I never really got into those. That's like. Did, okay, wait. Did you guys have uh, Halloween in your neighborhood? Yes. So even even like super rich people, they celebrate Halloween. Like, are there even any? <laughs> are there even any kids in your neighborhood that come around? Absolutely, man. Did they we get behind the good, gates, uh, huh? We actually had a good turnaround this year. You know, I actually felt so bad because, you know, we bought so much candy, and we actually last year we kind of stayed with a lot of candy because not a lot of people kind of because our house is a little bit hidden. Not a lot of people kind of knew that we were handing out candy, and this year, we I ran out of candy, man. Ran oh wow! Candy, so that so the word crazy. was out that hey Romero's house, let's hit that up. They they got they're giving away <laughs> hey, candy man. this year. Some some good candy, Mike and I, uh, you know, you name it. My favorite Smarties. I mean, who doesn't like Smarties? Smarties are legit, but I like M and M's though. M and M's over Smarties. M tough. But like the know. the peanut M and M's, like you get at the movie theater when you go, like go, you take a girl and get like yeah. the peanut M and M's, and then you know she has whatever, or you guys share them. I just, she, puts it, she puts it on her mouth, and then you get out of her mouth, right? That, that's the way it works, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Every time I go see one of those Twilight movies, I just spend the whole time, like 80 minutes of it, just making out. <laughs> I'm that dude. So when, okay, so okay, so 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 you had a bunch of kids from uh, your neighborhood um, coming by the house for Halloween and stuff. Now, when you were okay, so here's a question. Now, since you have achieved a lot of success in your career and you and you've achieved like part of your goal which is making it to the um to the major leagues what is it like when you reconnect with people from your high school like have have you seen any of these people or like have you been like facebook friends with any of these cats from your high school um yeah, yeah yes i am um yes and no you know because i went to high school to one high school for three years and my senior transferred to a different high school so i was a little bit it was a little bit different for me but you know, some of the some of the guys. I mean, I have a good friend that I still keep in touch with uh, that I'm able to reconnect with every once in a while. But obviously, he's a married man and a family guy. You know, uh, already. What, um, dude? Aren't you like 25 or 24? How old are you, Ricky? Man, I wish I was 25. I'm 28 already, man. Are you really? I'm pushing 30. Dude, you you look 18, so you're good in that department. <laughs> But, you know, it, 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 obviously, you know, on Facebook, you're able to connect with some of those people that uh, that that you went to high school with. And it, and it's crazy, man, when, when you see when you see them with kids and and the family, you know, you know, I'm still a guy that's that's searching for that right one. You know, so wait. OK, so so have you seen. OK, so you went to two high schools. Do you remember the hottest girl at either one of those high schools? Like, do you remember her name? <sighs> man. Uh, <laughs> and have you seen her since since you <laughs> have you seen her since you you've become employee number twenty four for the Toronto Blue Jays? You know what? My senior year, yeah, I'd say there was a softball player that was really pretty. Her name was or her name is Natalie. Natalie. And have I have I have I been able to reconnect with her? Yes. No, but she found me on Facebook recently, and obviously she's she's obviously a baby and. I don't know, husband or boyfriend, whatever it is. So she does. Oh, that's yeah. so disappointing. <laughs> hey, man, it's the way it is. Oh man, I thought that story was gonna have a better ending. Like, yeah, we reconnected, and hey, yeah, I saw her. I, in, I, I, saw I just thought she, I always just thought she was really pretty, really attractive girl, and that was it. You know, never really. What about necessarily made a move, you know, or anything like that? No, not not saying you have to, but I'm saying like the the beauty of Facebook is like. 
you can now reconnect with people from high school who like maybe, you know, she dated, you know, the captain of the basketball team, whatever, like your, your timing never worked out. But then, you know, 10 years later, it could be a totally different story. Like it, in uh, I don't know if you ever did this, but when I was in high school, I once did a poll. I did the top five girls at Galt Collegiate. So I, when I was in in in, uh, in Ontario, which is the province, we at my, the time when I was in high school, we went to a grade 13. It was called OAC. So anyway, my grade 13 year, I did this poll. I had nearly 100 dudes. And the hottest girl at our school, her name was Tanya Moss. And Tanya Moss, like, and this is by the, the, con, like the consensus, like 100 people. That's a pretty good cross-section of the school. So um, Tanya Moss, but the thing about Tanya Moss is like, when she was like 18 or 19, just got wifed up, had some kids right away, and just boom, just like vanished. So like almost like Natalie, but like earlier, like by the time she was 20, it was, had kids. We're just like, whoa. But there are other girls on that list, Ricky, through the, the beauty of the book of faces, a reconnection could happen. <laughs> so I wonder how what that's like for you. If you know you you live in uh do you live in the same town or the same part of California that you lived in when you were in high school? No, no. Oh, okay. Uh, you know I grew up in East Los Angeles, East Los Angeles, so uh, you know when I was able to uh, you know get out of Dodge, you're like I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. You know I've been blessed to to be able to afford to get my family out of there, and um, you know obviously I bought them a house and and all, and whatnot, and and you know and they live here now. Um, for me, you know, being in and out of the, in and out of the the country and and traveling so much, it, it's you know, it's when I come home, I'm a big family guy. I love being around my mom and my dad. You know, they're they're my they've been my biggest inspiration ever since 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 I was born. And so I come and stay here. But as of now, I'm still I'm trying to find a place to live out in in Manhattan Beach and or somewhere down there by the water and and kind of just. You know, I've been searching for that, and it's not easy. I thought it was gonna be easy to house hunt, but it's it's not that easy, man. <laughs> really? Like, are you what, like so? The houses that you're seeing are they either like, wow, this is like a stupid amount of money to pay for this beachfront, or just not like maybe a, a house that's not contemporary it. enough, or like, what are you looking let's for? Just, let's just put it's, it's it'll be like a nice little bachelor pad, man. That's, oh. that's, that's the best way. It's not like a house that you see and it's gonna blow you away. You know, you're gonna be like, wow, what an entrance, or wow, it's it's one of those just you know, bachelor house, you're by you're by the by the beach, you know, and it's relaxing and I just kinda like that environment. So hoping uh, you know, if by the time I leave for spring training I'm able to find something. If not, you know, I'll continue to look. No 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 hurry here. Manhattan Beach is a good look. I have some uh some of my hockey dudes that play for the Kings, they live down oh, yeah. in Merhat- Manhattan in Hermosa and Drew. Yeah. Drew. I mean Drew was one of my good buddies. Oh yeah, Drew there. Doughty, yeah, of course. Yeah. Have you been yeah. to his crib? No, no. Dude. But he already text. He's already been texting me saying, "Hey, man, if you get a house, I can't wait to see you out there." <laughs> Doggy, Drew, my guy has a friggin' jacuzzi on the. I don't even know if I should be saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because I'm excited. So the dude has a jacuzzi on his rooftop, and he has a TV that comes out of the floor. <laughs> like out of the floor comes this friggin' huge flat screen TV. I'm like. Dude, you're you're really living the dream. Like this is gross, and this is like the day after they won the Stanley Cup, and he just started laughing, and I and I started smiling as I was looking at the the guests that were in the hot tub that night. It was a it was a it was a nice it was a nice little after it was a nice little celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll just leave it there. Yes, we'll it yes, there. absolutely. Hey, so um, okay, so this upcoming weekend is uh, Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving. So like, what's the deal with Black Friday? Like, is it a huge like? We hear about it in Canada, but we don't really have like a big point of reference because we don't have like a one day. Actually, we have, we have something called Boxing Day, which is the day after Christmas, and I guess yeah. it's kind of similar to Black Friday. But people don't camp out like they do in your country for deals and stuff. Is it really that huge? Some people, some people, yes. For me, no, man. Hell no, I ain't about to go stand on the line for three hours or two hours, whatever they do. You know, for me, I'd rather hey. I'll do my online shopping and, and stick to that. <laughs> yeah, but, but Ricky, you're not a regular person. I mean, you are re- you're like a regular person with like an extraordinary job. So that doesn't mean <laughs> like you're not really a regular person. It's one of those things, man, where you know what? People love it. People love it because there's 
quote unquote so many deals out there, you know, but in the end, you know, hey, I'll take my chances and uh you know, I'm usually a late Christmas shopper anyway, so uh, I'll take my chances with that and and, and kind of just either look online or go to the mall, but it's it, it's hectic, man. From from this point all the way till Christmas, it'll be the malls here in 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 in, in California and where I live and all that stuff, it'll be a disaster, you know. Right. So Black Friday is definitely something that a lot of people, I'm sure, a lot of girls look forward to, you know, doing that kind of shopping and whatnot, and it, it, it gets pretty crazy. When was the last time you ever had to line up for something? <laughs> for just anything? Yeah, anything. Concert, I guess. Well, may, maybe not the airport, but like line up to purchase or, uh, yeah, purchase something, whether you're going to an event or you're buying a product. Uh, man, last night I went grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah. you? Hey Did man, it's Monday. It's Monday. It's, it's Monday night football. I mean, what? I mean, Mon, uh, Monday night football. The Niners are playing. I'm cooking some steaks for the fam. You know, Ooh, I mean, nice. it doesn't get any better than that. Nice. I have actually. You know what's is odd is uh, my my boy D A, who's from Calgary. Him and a group of friends flew. They went to Oakland last night. They saw the. I guess was it the was it the was it Denver that played? Uh, no, the Raiders and oh and New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans, yeah. And then they're they're going to be at uh at to watch the Niners play tonight. So it's like a cool little little sports weekend. I know you're a Niners fan and I know you're also a Lakers fan. Um do you have a hockey team? Man, I can't believe you put me in that situation right now. <laughs> listen, I know listen, I know you play in Toronto, okay? I you've been played in Toronto for 4 years or 5 years. Um so okay, that's understandable. Okay. So Pre Toronto Blue Jays, did you have a hockey team, or did you did you catch any of it on television? No, before you know, before I became a Blue Jay, before I even got to Toronto, you know, even when I was in the minors, I, I didn't really follow hockey. I didn't really understand the sport. I didn't really know what kind of impact it actually had in in Canada. And um, and when I got up there, you know, doing the winter tours uh, in the off season, I got to meet. You know, one of the first guys I got to meet was. Um, Logan Couture from the San Jose Sharks, and you know we've become we've become really really good friends ever since then. And uh, um, <clears throat> so it's tough, man. You know, as, as, as you know, the four years that I've spent in Toronto, it's it's been one of those things where you've met so many guys, you know, and and so many around the around around the league. It's tough to 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 kind of sit sit there and, and actually have a your your favorite team, you know, because I root for so many guys. I just like watching them on TV. I enjoy it, and this lockout sucks. <laughs> I, I hear you, man. I hear there. Canada is definitely feeling the the pinch and the burn of the lockout. And I'm totally I agree with you on uh, sort of like not rooting for a particular team because you have a lot of friends that play hockey. I'm in the same position as you. I have friends that play hockey for several different teams. So I no longer have a favorite team. When I was a kid. I used to be a Vancouver Canucks fan because I used to love Pavel Bure, and he was the best in the video game on the mm. on the Sega Genesis, NHL 93 and NHL 94. Pavel Bure was like pretty much unstoppable, so that's how I became a, a Vancouver Canucks fan. <clears throat> so yeah. you're okay. So you're also a Lakers fan, and just the yeah. other day, I, I I see your tweets. Uh, just the other day, uh, Kobe had his 18th uh, triple double, like 22, 11, and 11. Now, after the game, Kobe said, I'm not a scorer. Uh, sorry, he said, I'm a scorer. I'm not a triple-double player. He's always been honest. But I know there's an unwritten rule with what you can and cannot say to the media. So even though he's really, really honest and he always, he pretty much always speaks his mind, there is this unwritten rule. Now, how many times have you, Ricky Romero, had to bite your tongue when it came, when it came to speaking to the media? Never, man. Always Never? You always? <laughs> Come on. Uh, no, I mean, there's certain stuff, man. Hey, there's, there's certain stuff that goes along with, with, with the, the job that we do, and there's certain stuff that, you, that that has to stay in-house, and it does. You know, and if it doesn't, you know, you, you're you going to be in a little bit of trouble, you know? So you don't want to get that reputation not only from, 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 your, from your managers and your coaches, but from your teammates, you know? And... I love Kobe, man. The way Kobe talks to the media, I love it. You know, he he never holds back. He 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 like you said, he's an honest person, and 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 I admire him so much. You know, 
one, because I had a chance to be kind of that Lakers reporter for a day last year. Oh, and, that's awesome. And so I was kind of doing your job for here in L.A. for a day. And I, let me tell you, man, it's not that easy. You know, it can be a little intimidating <laughs> at times. And I didn't get a chance to interview him because that was the day that the whole – divorce thing came out with Vanessa and all that stuff. Oh, so she kinda, right, she right. Ruined my, she kind of ruined my... Your uh, debut? My, my debut to interview him. I did get a chance to interview Pal Gasol and, and, and uh, the late coach Mike Brown, who was just the coach here in L.A., and he's not anymore, but, you know, we're great people, and, you know, it takes a little while to get used to something like that, but, you know, standing on the, on the media side, but, um, <clears throat> you know, like I said, Kobe... To me, you know, it just he's he's so honest, and and and, and what is that? What I was able to take from from that is I asked questions to other media people. I was like, "What's Kobe like? You know, like what, what like how is he?" And like, and and everyone was like, "Man, if you if everyone knew how hard that guy works, um, you'd have that much more respect for him." You know, and and I know sometimes you know the people say, "Oh, he's he's cocky, he's that." But hey, man, you got to have that to play this game, whatever sport it is. You got to have some confidence on your side and and be cocky and know that you're the man. And and he knows it, you know, and he backs it up, which so, is awesome. And, and 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 I admire him for that. So you were so you were a reporter for the day. Was it was it for KCAL? It was for Lakers TV. Lakers TV. So so after the game, you're in the uh, you're in the 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 locker room. And you're getting what? So what did you ask Pau Gasol? Do you remember? Um, it was they were training at uh, at at this was preseason, so they were training at uh, USC. And I went in there and um, I asked them, uh, you know, just basic questions. How did the how did the how did the scrimmage go? You know, what you think? How's the team looking? And in the end, I was like, hey man, are we gonna see you uh, maybe turning into some Blue Jay games? You know, you gotta check us out. And the good thing is that he. That he, that he didn't check me out because he would have been like, God damn, this guy is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but you know, whatever. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's a cool. So wait, so Ricky, you asked him like standard questions. Don't you hate all the standard questions at this point? You get asked the same five questions every friggin' time that you're uh, that you you every fifth day that every uh, fifth day, man. you every get the you day, get the you same get, five get, questions. Same same questions, and it's. It's almost like so repetitive, you know. It's like, well, I'm sure the fans already know what I'm gonna say. If I almost feel like, you know, but like I said, it, it comes with the territory, you know. And for me, for myself, I had I had a bad year last year, and 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 I'll be the first to admit it, you know. I, it, it definitely didn't it definitely didn't make me happy or anything. But one thing I did was stand up to that media every every time I pitch, and every time the day before I pitch, you know. And and I think that takes you a long ways, you know. It, it, one, you got to be a professional about about what you do, and and I've always carried myself that way, you know. And I'm going to continue to carry myself that way because, you know, it's always good to 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 do the right thing. And and you know, as much as stuff didn't go my way last year, you know, it, it happens, and you move on. I thought you would give Pau Gasol a break, though, Ricky. You, I thought you would you wouldn't ask him the same kind of questions the other guys asked him. So he just he just got it piled on even by you. So like you, you uh, next time listen next time let's get together and then we'll come up with some strange stuff. Maybe not as odd as the questions that I ask you guys, but somewhere in that in that vein. So it's a it's a little bit of a break for you and for them. Yep, yep. And we'll make sure that whenever we'll make sure that it's a nice part of the. Well, hopefully nothing's going on with Kobe in his personal life, which would prevent him from talking to you in this uh, in this role. So, right. so, so if you, okay, so even as you said, you know, last year you struggled, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a great year for you. So even like, even in those times where you're like hella frustrated in yourself and like, and sometimes, I mean, it's not, it's, you know, your earned runs are being tacked on your record when you're not out there from a, like a reliever giving up hits and all that kind of stuff. How do you avoid not saying that? Like sometimes you want to just be like, man, well, listen, I left the game and I, there are only two runs on my thing, but I, you know, now that I'm sitting in this dugout, I have friggin' six earned runs on my score, my box, uh, my uh, my scorecard today, uh, my box score. Uh, so how do you avoid not blowing up a dude? No, man. Even though you hey, want to. You, you, you got to understand that that these guys are doing the best they can, and you know. Whether it's a good day or a bad day, you know, you got to make sure you 
you all, you, you got to be a good teammate, man, you know, because those guys have gotten me out of so much trouble in the past, you know, even before last year, you know, they, I've had, you know, for they come in with men on base and they, they save my butt, you know, so to the good, to the bad, uh, those guys, you know, those guys, the job is not easy. So you got to just continue to be, be uh, a professional and a good teammate, and uh, you know I'll never be that kind of that kind of person where you know you're you're gonna blow up someone because he gave up your runs. It's part of the game, and it's just the way it is. You know, you just you just learn to deal with it, and and hey, you know, you if anything, you pick them up and you say, hey man, it's all right. We'll 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 get it next time. I know you're a West Coast guy, but I'm gonna borrow a line from an East Coast guy. The notorious Big once said, "Real bad boys move in silence and violence." So. You know, as as it's as it's part of the Godfather mythology, gangsters don't talk. So I, I understand that you can want to keep everything in the house, and Absolutely. not. Uh, and like I said, those guys are trying their their butts off, you know, to to try and put up zero or whatever whatever it's demanded of them, and 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 you you respect what they do. So like for the next, I guess once spring training hits in February, I don't know if you've done any interviews since November 13 when the news hit that uh, the Blue Jays and the Marlins pulled off this mega trade, 12 players plus some cash floating in there. Um, how did you hear about the trade between Toronto and Miami? Um, through Twitter, man. That's you know, how you it, heard? It, See, Jose said the same thing. I, I, I spoke to Jose Batista earlier, and he said the same thing. Like, Twitter is how he found out. Yeah, it's, it's crazy what, uh, what social media, the power of social media has, has uh, nowadays, not only for, for just, you know, just – for for anyone that just has a Twitter account, it's even for professional athletes. You find out so much stuff through there, you know. And uh, I was just laying, uh, you know, I was after training and watching TV, and then all of a sudden, I just was reading some of the what people were tweeting, and all of a sudden, boom, that pops up, and you're kind of like, whoa, what's going on? And then, you know, at first it was one player, and then one player turned into 12 players total, you know. So, <laughs> in the end, it was it was pretty crazy, man. And like I said, I couldn't be more excited for myself for my teammates and the city of Toronto and all of Canada. You know, I know they're, they're excited too. And uh, it's, 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 it's something that it's a, it's a good, it's a good start for us. But at the same time, we also got to keep our feet on the ground because uh, in this division and in this league, nothing's going to be given to us. You know, if anything, I'll say this, you know, our target has grown that much bigger and uh, you know, teams, teams are definitely now going to really, really going to come after us and, and try to prove that, you know, we're just another team, you know, and, and that's just the way it is. So, we got to keep our heads on straight, and 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 we got a long ways to go. We got a lot of work to do, and uh, but I definitely like the the foundation that we've set up. Ricky, who was the first person that you texted just to be like, "Have you heard this?" Or, <laughs> dude, like, what's going on? I texted uh, <laughs> Brandon. I think Brandon and Casey Jansen were the first two guys. And um, and had they heard, or were you breaking the news to them as well? Brandon was like, his his text message was. No, dude. What are you talking about? I just, I just got out of the gym. Oh, so he like, did, okay. So you broke the news to him. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and then he's like, I was like, well, go on Twitter right now and read this stuff. And he's like, and then he's like, whoa, they just added this guy. Whoa, they just added this guy. And I'm like, really? And then it was just like we were going back and forth. And then Casey was just, he was doing some, uh, some running some errands too. And he's like, dude, what are you talking about? I was like, dude, look at this tweet. And he he saw it and he's like, whoa. And then, like I said, everyone, I think it just kind of, the news kind of spread from there, and it was just pretty crazy. So you add, so so the Toronto Blue Jays are adding, uh, for the pitchers, Josh Johnson and Mark Burley. Ricky, you're the ace, okay? You're the number one guy. So on, you know, April whatever, 2013, do you expect to be the, like, the first dude on that mound for the 2013 Blue Jays? Or will you well, might might you be the second guy? What do you what do you expect? Well, first of all, thank you for having all that confidence in me. <laughs> Come on, man! You know you're the ace. Listen, I love the commercial you studying in the off season, like you're just getting your getting your friggin' like your your Tom Brady on just in the film room, Peyton Manning just studying and studying. Maybe you need to do more studying. You know what? No, I'm just man, messing honest, with you. Honestly. Um, you know, the, I've always said this, you know, the ace label is not something that I put on myself. It's something that the media puts on you and fans put on you. And to me, it really doesn't matter, man. You know, I've always said, I've, all, I, you know, ever since I was drafted by the Blue Jays in 2005, my goal is to win a World Series for the city of Toronto. So whether I'm the number one guy 
or number five guy. It doesn't matter. You know, in the end, it's it's about who holds that trophy out, up, um, and and who's who's laughing at the end. You know, enjoying popping that champagne and and. You know what better way than to take the party down Blue Jay way after a, a World Series win? You know I'm ta- I get chills just talking about it. You know, but <laughs> in all honesty, you know it, it's the truth, man. You know uh, it's it's never been about my ego, and it never will be. You know, if anything, hey, whatever they need me to do, um, I'm gonna be ready for it. And I know, you know, with <clears throat> with the eight off season that I've had, you know, with the rough season and the off season that I had of having surgery and stuff like that. You know, rehabbing, it's all just motivation and to, to be able to come back next year and, and, and be ready. So, Ricky, you didn't answer the question. Where are you going to be <laughs> in the rotation once the 2013 – See, where do you expect? Do you expect to be the number one guy, the number two guy, maybe you know, the number three guy? <laughs> no idea, man. Whatever whatever the manager says, you, whoever our manager, whoever this mysterious manager is, right. uh, whatever, whatever, wherever he wants – Wherever he wants me to pitch, that's that's what I'll get ready for. You know? Where do you like want to be? One, two, three, four, or five, man. It doesn't matter. It's all, it's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. I'm telling you, you still got to go out there and face the same lineups that you the, the other guys face. The, you know, depending on the three game series. So, and, and nothing changes, man. Every every team's tough. Hey, quick question: What's the deal with the taxes? Like, I, I okay, so like you know, in Florida, I don't know if. I'm not sure. Is there's is it that there's no property tax or that that there's no income tax in the state of Florida? There's there's no there's no uh, there's no state tax. So there's no state tax. Okay. So when these dudes, I mean, you're you're from California. So do you have to pay taxes in California and in Toronto because you split? Like your we six, pay, we pay we pay taxes in the United States and we pay taxes in Canada. Yeah, we get taxed both ways. You got you get taxed twice. Yeah. Do you know, like, obviously you're in the, the the highest income bracket, so do you get taxed twice at the same percentage in both countries? <laughs> I, I have no yeah. idea. Dude, I, I've, I've, no, I've never asked this question, so I, I have no idea. I, you know what? I leave everything to my tax guy, and all I do is... Hey, you're supposed like, to right. know. Well, <laughs> what if what if he's what if he's taking a little more off the top and he's, now no, he's pushing uh, a nice Mercedes, uh, courtesy I, I, of number twenty four. I I, tr- I trust him. I trust him, and he he's done it actually a really really good job with with my stuff. And uh, um, you know, from what I know is we pay taxes both ways, and, and that's pretty much it. All you uh, it hurts to write that check, but you gotta write. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> so you don't know exactly the percentage of your salary that you're paying. Uh, I'm not. A- not exactly. I, isn't it like it's? I think I feel like it's like between thirty-seven. No, no, it's more closer like forty in your country. I'm. Not, I think in. I think in Canada it's like thirty, somewhere between thirty and thirty-five percent. But I'm not sure. Well, I mean, geez, man, you guys, you got to get a little side gig. You might have to get a little, a little a job uh, delivering newspapers like I had at ten, just so you can make up the the difference of what you're being taxed here in no, Canada. I think, I, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you'll be all right too. <laughs> you got you got seven sheets. You're 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 nice with it. So okay, so you will be um, uh, two new uh, pitchers and a new catcher. So uh, uh, Josh Johnson, Mark Burley, and uh, Mark Burley, excuse me, and and uh, John Buck. Have you ever met or spoken to these guys before? Well, John Buck was my teammate two years ago. So. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. So him, yes. Uh, the other guys, no, I haven't spoken to them. I've never really. Uh, spoken to him. Uh, have you faced Mark Burley when he was uh, with the White Sox? Have you ever had to go? I could probably I look we, it up, but I don't. I don't. Re- I don't. I don't remember, man. I don't remember. We might have faced off against each other, but I know we faced the Miami Marlins last year. I faced. I remember facing Reyes, and uh, and John Buck. So, um, other than that, it's, I've never really fully had a conversation with with any of them, you know. But like I said, I'm looking forward to having two studs on the rotation and and, and learning from them. Now Jose Batista said, when I asked him what, like what his role is in the in the clubhouse, he he de- he described various roles. He's like, you know, some guys are the jokesters, some guys are the, um, well, he basically said who the jokesters were. There <laughs> were some guys were the high energy guys, uh, and he said the jokesters, and then some guys were the guys that loved uh, the t- the TV cameras. That being J.P. Aaron Sevilla, and and I know he's your running mate. So when these five new guys—Bonifacio, Buck, Burley, Johnson, and Reyes—come into your clubhouse, 
Uh, sorry. Okay. Firstly, what is the role that you play in the clubhouse? Like, what? Are, like, if I, if you could be a, a a certain guy, are you the jokes guy? Are you the check in with everybody guy? Are you the super focused guy? Are you the guy yeah. that plays the games at the table with the other dudes? Are you like what is what's you, what? You know what uh, hat do you wear inside that clubhouse? I'm pretty quiet, man. You know, my locker's kind of in the end, and I sit in my corner, man. And it, for me, it, it, when it's time to you're the antisocial it, guy, Ricky. And no, I, I, I socialize. I socialize, but at the same time, you know, it, it's business when you get there. You know, it's not a playground. And, um, <laughs> Although some uh, guys yeah. do treat it like a playground. <laughs> um, so for me, is you know, I, I go in there and I got to get my work done, and that's first, you know, whatever I got to do to to kind of get me ready for whenever I'm going to pitch. So I'm usually pretty quiet, you know. I, I'll, I'll joke around and do stuff and, and 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 mess around like that. But when it comes down to to being about business, I'm all about business and 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 ready to work. Of your teammates that got traded, Yunel Escobar, Henderson Alvarez, Justin Nicolino, I don't even know if you met a lot of these guys, or most of these dudes, Anthony uh, Descalfini, I'm probably saying that wrong, Adani Echeverria, Jeff Mathis, Jake Marisnik. Who are you going to miss the most? Mathis, man. That was my boy. You know, He's actually a funny yeah. dude. I met him before. He came to yeah. one of our parties. We had yeah, the... He, good, good dude, you know, all around, just... just top-notch guy and uh you know had a lot of chance a lot of chances to talk to him and and learn from him you know obviously being a catcher playing in some good playoffs teams here in anaheim it was you know learning from him was pretty cool and uh you know i texted him right away i was like man i'm gonna miss you you know thank you for everything and you know i'm you great teammate you know all around and um you, you that's what you when, when you want to you know when you talk about a good baseball player and a good person off the field hey, jeff mathis um goes under that qualification and um you know you're definitely gonna miss a guy like that yeah man he's see i've had i've had a couple limited dealings with the dude but he always seemed like he was like just a good dude now do you have any idea how the city of toronto experienced hearing about this mega trade between the blue jays and the marlins from twitter man it, it's being nuts you know it, it, you you sense the excitement you know and then it's 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 crazy. It's 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 unreal, you know, just to to kind of see how happy and how pumped people are. You know, obviously there's a few uh, <laughs> rude comments you get. Yeah, there's of, some haters. Oh, they're always yeah, haters, you idiots. The, you get the hey man, have fun in, in Buffalo, you know. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and people think that I'm gonna get hurt about when they say you know have fun pitching out of the fourth or fifth row uh, in the rotation, and like it's a bad thing, you know. It, it actually is a good thing, and people should be happy, you know that. Our rotation is that deep, you know, and, and you know, like you said, it's, it, there's some haters out there, but at the same time, hey, because of territory, you go, you go along and you get ready, and you, when it's time to strap it on, you, you're ready to throw those punches. Ricky, are you guys ready to, you know, put your feet your, firmly in that spotlight, which is usually reserved for the New York Yankees, the Baltimore, uh, sorry, excuse me, the Boston Red Sox, and, and the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, and now... The Baltimore Orioles have they've put their feet in that spotlight. Are you are you ready to those you know move your elbows a little bit to nudge your way into that spotlight as a team as the Toronto Blue Jays? Are we ready? Um, yes, it's something that we've been waiting for. But there's only one thing we got to do, and that's win. Nice man, nice. Well, listen, Ricky, it's been awesome talking to you. Thanks, um, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Please, when if you're if you're you know if the rest of your family is having. You know, if they take a few days off to go on a little road trip, make sure you have some guests in that hot tub because I would love to just get a, uh, <laughs> an e a picture to my BBM or to my iPhone uh, from you. It's like, hey, Cab, um, uh, enjoying, enjoying the West Coast. I don't wish you were here because I, have, uh, I can handle this by myself all day, just me. <laughs> One <it>. man. <laughs> Uh, so hey man, well well listen. Uh, good luck in the in the winter time. I know I, I already saw it. you're already tr working out, right? Already training, man. Oh, Rehabbing man. and training. Well, good luck in your, on your way back, man. We hope that uh, you know you're back to 2011 form where you're just killing them. And uh, we I look forward to seeing you in uh, March or April, my dude. Thanks, man. Thanks for having. And if me. I, if I'm in LA, I'll definitely hit you up. We're we're trying to do something with uh with Kobe and, and Nash. So what if I. Uh, when we get out there, I'll hit you up. Sounds good, man. Thank you. Thanks again, my dude. All righty. As a Torontonian, I'm excited for the city and the potential 
of the 2013 Blue Jays. This city has, hasn't had much to celebrate over the last decade in terms of the big three sports franchises we have here in the T-Dot. The Blue Jays, the Leafs, and the Raptors. The Toronto Argonauts have given us a championship, a great cup in 2004, but the big three, a lot of size and lowered heads. Love Ricky Romero and his honesty. He took his lumps on the mound and stood in front of the media every fifth day in 2012 and said, hey, this is on me. So I love that about him. He, that, that's a grown man move right there. Now he's rehabbing and hopefully he'll be back to 100% by the time spring training rolls around in March. To follow him on Twitter, it's at Ricky Rowe. That's at R-I-C-K-Y-R-O-2-4. Ooh, that was a little rough right there, Cav. And uh, to follow what's going on in the life of Jose Batista on Twitter, it's at Joey Bats. J-O-E-Y-B-A-T-S-1-9. At Joey Bats 19. At Joey Bats 19. He's always got cool things to give away. And as we discussed this season, he might let you choose his entrance music. So that would be pretty cool. I appreciate everyone for listening. I'm Cabby, and I'm gone. Thank you for listening to Cabby Presents, the podcast.